What is up, everyone? My name is Will Cashin here on behalf of the Undialed podcast, the greatest scootering podcast ever. <laughs> um, I sounded like, what's his name? Anyway, I got some cool guests on this show today. Um, cool guests, introduce yourself. What's up, every viewer who is viewing? I am Daniel Cardenas, better known as Burrito Guido, representing Northern Limited, Aztec Scooters, and the Scooter Farm. And to the right of me, we have Richard Hark from Re Chicago. Just representing visiting, Chicago. <laughs> visiting AZ right now for a couple of weeks with this guy. Hell yeah. I, I feel like I, I feel like this is such like a cool, cool thing to have you two on here because I feel like the unique thing about you, Daniel, is is you are a fantastic writer. But beyond from that, you are a filmer and that is like that's kind of your niche within scootering that's like the mm -hmm. thing that i feel like you tackle the most but also like rich you're also a filmer you know what i mean and you're out here to film daniel yep. and it's like we got a lot of film knowledge right here right now and i wanted to just talk about scooter filming because i feel like scooter filming is i wouldn't say underappreciated but unless you're really into scootering i feel like you you don't realize how much work and effort it really takes. Cause I feel like the, in certain circumstances, I feel like the filmer is just like, like, Oh yeah, they, 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 they filmed it, but it's like the writers are the ones that really get the credit for like the amazing edit. But I feel like in a lot of circumstances, I think that half of an edit is the filming and editing. And the other half is like the, the writing, like you could take the best writing in the world and display it as awful. Or you could take some of the worst writing and display it in the right way that it would actually be kind of sick. Right. You know? Yeah. And I feel like... Yeah. What? You know what's the best example of that? What? And I don't know who I'm disrespecting when I say this, but my bad. <laughs> Is uh, that Coalition video <clears throat> with Dante, Richard... Um, who's on their team? Dante, Richard, Timo, and they had one more rider. Is this the year in Barcelona? No, no, no. It was like... Oh, it was the LA America team. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. The, one, the year that Dante flipped El Toro. Yeah. Like, that was that's a heavy team. That is very a very heavy, heavy team. team. Yeah. But when you watch their video, it's ass. <laughs> I don't know who I just disrespected, but it was bad. Yeah, well, I, I heard part of their problem was they didn't know the land of America. Like, they had a, such a hard time finding spots. I feel like America's so... No, it's not even spots, dude. It was, like, the production. Yeah, line. okay. <laughs> but that's, like, a perfect example as yeah. to what you're saying. Because, like, those all of those writers are insane writers. And... uh it, it just like takes away from their writing when they're not um, displayed properly. Mm -hmm. I feel like all scooter tricks are like a buildup and release of energy. And I feel like when you are f editing, I feel like you have to, if anything, like enhance the, the tricks being done or the energy release over the course of the trick being like, you need to be able to like enhance that with the music. Yeah. Like I feel like, I feel like I watch so many edits sometimes where it's just like clips and there's a there's a timeline where they just lay music beneath and nothing matches up and it's just like yeah it's got to go with it it bugs me yeah sorry i instantly thought of more edits who did that, <laughs> just, that just fall into that category oh <laughs> so rich how long have you been filming for um i'm pretty much since i started scootering like on a dslr and all you know starting out it was terrible but uh, I, pro I probably took it more seriously, like, around 2014, 2015. Mm -hmm. I just realized, I'm like, hey, I got everybody around me that's, like, really good at scootering. What, I like, what made them. you want to be, like, I want to dedicate my scootering time, the time that I would be scootering, to filming? Like, what, what made you take that leap? Because I feel like... I feel like there's a lot of scooter riders that do take that route, but majority of the scooter riders mostly just zone in on like the tricks, specifically the tricks. Yeah. And then there's like that small niche of riders that like also are like, yeah, I like doing tricks, but I also like filming. What made you like go, like what made you transition your mind into being like, I want to film right now? Um, I guess I just realized like I couldn't keep up with everyone else, you know, and I, when I'm seeing everyone throw down, I'm like, dude, I got to film that for you so someone can see that, you know? Yeah. And I realized, I'm like, I don't really like how I'm filming at all. I kind of want to get better at it. Mm -hmm. So I just started trying to practice improving and all. Got to a spot where I kind of liked it soon. Yeah. What's, when when you say you didn't really like like your filming, like who who did you look up to at that time that that you feel like really inspired you to 
Um, I would say I was started off like by watching a lot of like you know rollerblading and skateboard videos and BMX as well. Mm-hmm. So like some examples come to mind is like Chris Thiessen and maybe like Strobeck as well. So I see people like that, and I'm like, I'm gonna try to improve myself. But at the same time, I was like, I don't want to just become another like skateboard filmer. Mm-hmm. I kind of want to put my own twist on it. That's different. So. Yeah, and I don't know if you remember, but when Richard's filming started popping off, it was when he, like, start Like, I took notice of it because, like, mm. there was no edits looking like Richard's when he, like, really started popping off. And it, it was really because, like, you really, like, got closer than anybody ever got, mm-hmm. like, yeah. physically. Like, he was all up in your shit when he was filming your clips. And it, it looked so different because nobody filmed like that in scootering. And it, that inspired me to, like get closer and film better was you because yeah. like nobody in scootering was filming that close like yeah. i don't know if you remember there was like a wave where richard was dropping like little one minute one like two minute to one minute video parts mm-hmm. of like christian dean parish uh kuba devin healed shorty and they all smacked like they were all so good mm-hmm. and it had to do with the filming if you look at the comments it's everyone talking about the filming because there's such a there's such an art to riding next to another scooter rider with a scooter mm. and filming them up close. Because you just use a scooter, right, to film, or do you use a skateboard? Um, I just use a scooter. Or he runs. I mean, or yeah. you run. I mean, I've been experimenting with it. I don't necessarily like doing that as much anymore. But like, I think Christian's video, mm-hmm. it's like so extreme and like hard <laughs> to watch now. But like, uh, I didn't even use anything. I ran the whole entire time. For the whole video he even jumped down a set yeah, I, I jumped like up and because if you watch so. it christian is crazy. he manualed down the set or did he trick it i think there's one where he like he like firecrackered right i think so i, I jumped down the set with him like holding it yeah but I, <laughs> if you re-watch I it, it if you re-watch it you'll notice it yeah I, it got to a point where i was like well i filmed like a bunch of clips already without my scooter i'm just gonna like make this as stupid as possible right now see where it goes that's sick yeah that's so funny Daniel, what about you? What what made you feel like you wanted to transition to filming as a writer or at least take on that task as a writer? Um, I low-key just didn't... I low-key just didn't like the way I was being filmed. Mm. And so <laughs> I was like... But I don't even know how that makes sense to like... I want to learn how to film better because I'm not being filmed well. Because like I can't even film myself. So it's like, what was the point of that? Yeah. But... um. I don't know. I've always been an artistic, creative, like, person that, like, likes to do things. So I kind of just, like, took it upon my... Oh, you know you what? I think it was when I was riding with the Peachy guys. Mm -hmm. And they needed somebody to film. And I just, like... I was like, I'll film. I've always filmed since, like, eighth grade. Because that's when I got, like, my first Canon T3i. Mm -hmm. And, like, we just filmed, like, DSLR edits. And, like, they're nothing special at all. Like, if you watch them, they're pretty ass... But um, later on, when I started filming with the VX with the Peachy guys, is when I was like, you know what, I, I like want to get good at this so that I could like film, you know, all the homies. And then I don't think I was like really known for filming until, or at least like a reputable like filmer until you plugged me in with Tilt to film the ten year video. Yeah. Because before that, I can't remember really filming anybody. You filmed... Okay, the way, Oh, I filmed the Coalition video. Yeah. Was that... I don't, I don't that was even, after. Or is that before? I can't even remember. <laughs> I can't either. But honestly, Dylan Morrison hit me up to do that. And I remember feeling, how does this fool even know that I film? Because before that, I had like no popular projects. I had like no, repu- like no reputation as a filmer. And... Dylan hit me up to film for Coalition. And I'm like, how does this fool... Like, why... What makes him think that I can film? Yeah. And then after Coalition, people, like, took note that I film. Well, Not the best either, but, like, that I filmed. Well, your Coalition part was um, amazing. I feel like it had this, like, this certain level of, of like, kind of hoodlum hype to it. <laughs> of just, like... Yeah. It was really cool. Like, I... And I, I remember I wasn't at the premiere, unfortunately, but I remember you telling me that like that video popped up so much in the premiere. It did because like it, it, it was the it was introduced with like us breaking a car 
like we were like smashing a car and it was just like the intro to three shots with bobby Schmurda in it yeah and i mean that song just goes like by itself yeah so <laughs> it just paired very well <laughs> like nobody had my playlist so very true you you keep your playlist on lock yeah. like no, no one's allowed to see that no they're not <laughs> i literally have a playlist for edits that no one's allowed to see that's so funny so what was it like filming for coalition i feel like that i've heard i think maybe from even you that it was like the most intense 10 days of from like a filmer's perspective strictly, yeah. strictly from a filmer's perspective of like trying to drive around everywhere film everything but then also like while the other boys are resting you you have to be editing you know what i mean yeah it's definitely the most work you ever do in 10 days because i mean it's all all day filming <laughs> you spend all day filming but in my situation, I mm -hmm. was also like the spot guide and the driver. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it was L.A. and San Diego, which luckily I, I've spent enough time to have my own spots like on on my maps, because prior to that, I had no spots. And if it wasn't for filming with Zamora and Ruben Rodriguez, I would have no spots. Like, I, I mean, before I didn't even have like pins. I like went to my photos and then went to my location like yeah you know what dude, i mean yeah yeah and i zoomed in and like looked for like photos that i took at spots and those are all the spots that we went to was <laughs> was where i had <laughs> all my photos because ruben was just not sharing spots with me he was like i'll sell them to you and i was like oh. sell them to you ruben was gonna sell you yeah, spots he was selling spots to people during coalition oh, that's smart though i mean yeah he, he definitely capitalized on the situation <laughs> And you know, pro kind, I respect, kind of fucked up, I respect the right. I respect the hustle. <laughs> Definitely respect the hustle, but like fuck. I know, dude. <laughs> so like, like you're you're making bank off I your boys. To, I had to find spots for us, and then I was driving us around, and then I was filming all day, and that was the most serious I ever like took my filming. Like I was like, I have to make sure like I film every clip good, you know? Mm -hmm. Cause like I was filming Jonathan Peroni, I was filming Dylan Morrison. I was filming Kevin, uh, Kevin Austin, Kevin Austin and Shorty. And so I was like, I definitely don't want to make any of these clips look bad, mm -hmm. you know, because like that's an explosive group. You got to betray it. Very. And dude, oh, my gosh, the crew that I'm filming in this next coalition. I mean, it's it's, it's they're all great writers, like it's the best writers in the world, but I'm really hyped for this next group. I'm excited. I have no idea who your yeah. team is. But to answer your question, it is very very stressful because mm -hmm. as the filmer you are working every day all day you know whereas as the writers you can like relax while other people are getting clips like it's stressful because as the writer you do have to throw your body you know and you do have to like push the limits because it's coalition you know yeah but like you also have your rest period yeah. as the filmer and editor you don't no you're you know? you're as hard, like as, as hard as you're going, you don't peak out as high as the riders, but like you're consistently doing that certain level for right. Yeah. yeah. And it, it takes energy to stand and to like ride yeah. next to people and to like mm. your brain is still using energy to edit and import and takes a lot of patience and like a lot of, I don't know. I, I, I don't have the other word. Patience <laughs> and fill in the blank in the comments. Patience <laughs> and dedication. Yeah. Let's say like somebody's filming a line or something and they're done, they're hyped on their clip. It's next person's like, are you ready to film mine? It's like, exactly. If like I get that. a second. I've been, I've been <laughs> You've already filmed for this hour, person yeah. for 45 minutes. Like I, Dude, like, your arm is yeah. sore. You're riding with the person. Like you're doing the same amount of like miles as the person like next to you. Yeah. I mean, they're doing like the tricks, which is like, like you know, an extra like oomph to their body. But like you're still doing the same motion, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you're you're riding the same geographical distance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Richard's right; it is consistent because once one you're on a team with four people, and all of them, each rider's mentality is, "I want to pop off for coalition," and so as soon as they get they get a chance to get a clip, like as soon as one person's done, the next person, yo yo, yo dude, I got a clip, let's go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they've been, they've been waiting on the sidelines for like an hour, just eager to go. Yeah. So, and they see that you're done. They're like, all right, let's go. Right now. And, and the you, filmer's like, 
I get that you've been waiting, but I, I need a minute to. <laughs> yeah, to and you as the filmer, you have to you have to be consistent with the quality of your clip. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't fumble with the next rider. Yeah, you have to be able to. Um, like the other the other thing about it too that I was thinking is like riders will I feel like riders like the hype kind of comes in waves, but mm -hmm. it happens for everybody. So it's like there's gonna be like a certain day of the week that like like that is the day that all of the riders are gonna be like feeling it you know and then it's like also the day that like you you have to edit the most amount of things or whatever it's just like i'm sure it waves like that too yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i yeah you you have to manage your time when it comes to coalition like you really have to know how to manage your time wisely luckily i came up with like every night i'm gonna import you know i, I heard that some people didn't import until like the last day which is so stressful. I heard they didn't edit till the last day. No way. I like, I import, what I did was I imported every night and I organized everybody's clips on a thread, like on a, in a file. So it's like, here's all the Jonathans. Here's all the Kevins. Here's all the Dylans. Here's all the shorties, right? That way when it's time to edit, I can like pick and choose from each person's section. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So you could equally distribute the yes. clips out. And throughout the week, the boys and I would listen to music that we wanted to use for that way, when it's time to edit, I already know what I'm going to edit to. Because that is such a huge part. When it's time to edit and you don't have a song, you could you could literally spend hours searching looking for a song. That's, yeah, I've that's been That's by there. far the hardest part for me sometimes, yeah. Like, I'll have a video finished, and I'm like, spend months trying to find a song. And I'm like, I can't find anything I like. Mm -hmm. I no. hate how that's such a variable. And then, the, comes to and then the, the other variable on top of that, you find the song that's perfect, but then you upload it. And it's copywritten. Yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, that's yeah. like that's like the other. That happened to me with Isaac's latest edit with his uh the one that we filmed in Seattle for his selects part. Because, mm -hmm. well, I was looking for a song and luckily it only took me two days. <laughs> and uh, it only it took when I found it. My friend, uh, shout out Jonathan in San Francisco. His band Provoker. Shout out Provoker um dropped a new album and i was like cool my friend dropped a new album i'm gonna listen to it and it had the song like the second i heard it, i'm like oh this is the song i want to use right and so um used it did a rough draft edit uploaded it to send to um to the tilt guys like just for like for feedback it was, yeah it was just the first draft and it was like already copywritten and i was like <laughs> fuck i was like i don't want to change the song whatsoever so i hit up my friend jonathan and then he gave me the contact info to like the label mm -hmm. and I had to like go back and forth with the label and we got it cleared for a tilt to like use the song. But it was so much back and forth and it was like it was stressful. This is the most I've ever done for a song. Damn. I remember like the other thing too that YouTube does that's really whack is that it won't immediately like mute your mute your video, but it will like yeah. a year later. There's been so many great scooter edits over the years that have been just are gone now. Like yeah, exactly. my, the one that just pops in my head, El Nino. Dude, yeah. Oh my gosh. That video Perfect was example. such a classic. I actually uh, uploaded like a version of that on Vimeo a while ago because I found like a, a link to it. And I was like, dude, I have to put, post this because <laughs> I love this video and you can't even hear it on YouTube. So I think it's still out there somewhere on Vimeo. It was just like the first section. Yeah. With with the B roll and Reese jumping into the pool, yeah, like that was. It was it was a vibe. Yeah, it's one of the best scooter videos. Who, I can't. Who made that video? Ian did. Ian Knight Ian. did. Literally the goat. Yeah, that was literally like, earlier he was yeah. talking about how much of a goat Ian Knight is. He's like a huge inspiration on everything scootering. People don't even realize. I I've realized. I Ian Ian is, and he's like, trendsetter. Yeah. yeah. And he wasn't even really like a like a big scooter rider or anything. He kind of just got back into it like around 2015, and like learned how to scooter pretty much for the first time with like all the sky high guys. Got like really good, really fast. Damn. Have you ever thought about going to Coalition? I, I was want I wanted to ask you about that. Um, if the opportunity was there, yeah. I'd yeah. Be down. Why don't you make that opportunity happen? <laughs> we, you're one of the best scooter filmers. Let me know. Let him know. Let, Let him know, know, people. Let me know if you want. It's a uh, if any of the teams need a filmer, hit up Richard. Sure. Yeah, he'll have his resume attached beneath. So yeah. go, go check it out. But yeah, no. Uh, 
his resume attached. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but El Nino, wow. That was <laughs> let's pull it back to El Nino. I like that, yeah. Okay, tell me about what what the what the, what is the scene like in Chicago? You're you're out there capturing what that atmosphere is. I've never really scootered in Chicago, which is really ironic. I was born there, um, but I I've never really scootered there at all. Tell me about from your perspective, from Richard's perspective, the Chicago scooter scene. Um, yeah, it's been going really good right now. Uh, Justin or Busty Justy, mm -hmm. he's been filming a video for the Shy Guys, so a lot of the dudes have like a part in that. And I think that's coming out probably in the next couple of months or so. Oh, and yeah. And uh, we have, like, a whole new, like, crew of younger kids that are getting really good. Really? Yeah. They put out the Lizard Vision video over the summer. That's sick. Like those guys. So, like, we're going to be passing the torch to them eventually, you know. As it should. Definitely. Damn. I, I'm always so impressed with the Chicago Street Jam and how many people go out to that. Yeah. That's, it's, like, it's crazy. That's I don't it. know if people still come through, but everybody comes through. Everyone, I, except Everyone. me. I've never been. You've never been? <laughs> You've never been? I've never been to Chicago Street Jam. Not to one? Not to single one. Wow. Dang. My first one was 2006, 15. Yeah, my first one was two. I think that's when I met you, right? Yeah. That was my first one because I went with Cole. He took me, such a random group. He took me, uh, Aaron Anchi. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what? Alex Stedman and him. It was us four. We road tripped. Wasn't Keelan there that year too? I remember I don't him know if like he was there. I just remember like there was content of him and Cole in Chicago. I met Keelan that year because on our way to Chicago, we went to Colorado first. That might have been what it was. We went to Colorado first, hung out with Ed. Oh my goodness, dude. If it wasn't for that trip, I would not have met so many people. Like, well, maybe I might have later in the future, but that's when I met so many people. Cause like literally nobody knew me. I would, I was nobody. I mean, and then just like we went on that trip and we stayed at Ian's house, and like Proto stayed there. Uh, like the whole team, Proto stayed there. TSI stayed there. Who else stayed there? It was just like teams stayed there, and That's I had crazy. I had to meet everybody. Like I can't just be there and not say like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, what's up? I'm Daniel. It was, it was insane. I met so many people on that trip. That's crazy. Yeah. I feel like something that's interesting, I, I think about my own scootering life and it's like, there's so many people I know that I met so early on that if I wouldn't have met them so early on, I wouldn't have as good of a connection with now. Like I think about my connection with like Beck, for example. I don't even see Beck that much. I see him every <laughs> once in a while, but when I do see him, it's like, he's immediately my boy. But it's only because we spent so many like weeks at Woodward together as like children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> That's funny. Have you have you heard about the potential of the adult week at or the adult weekend at Woodward East to try to like no. re yeah, re spark up like the older scene in scootering to like go out there like the <laughs> what? I thought I just thought is it, it going to be like a camp or is it basically people to show up? No, it's going to be like a camp but there's it's gonna only be like 200 bucks really? and and it's there you're not gonna need like supervisors like you would in with kids you know so it's gonna be a little bit cheaper it's just you're basically paying for food and and stay and and it's it's gonna be 18 plus so i don't know i feel like that'd be so interesting so there are no kids allowed at all during that week then no it's just adult scooter riders <laughs> it's kind of sick <laughs> would you go out to it uh if Aztec flies me out, <laughs> I don't know how to feel about it, how I feel about it. That's like, I don't know. True. I don't know. It's just random. It, it made me think of just like the old days at Woodward, just like those old hype, hyped up crazy events. Those were sick. Hella washed up dudes like <laughs> <at> Woodward. <laughs> just trying to scooter again. That'd be pretty funny. So going back to filming, I, I wanted to bring something up. So you started on a DSLR, right? We all started on DSLRs. Yeah, I did. What made you make that shift to an actual video camera versus a more photo-based camera? Um, Rich, I'll start with you. Yeah, I just realized I like four by three a lot better because uh, sixteen by nine is really hard to film like up close and stuff. And mm -hmm. that four by three worked real good. And I wasn't really taking much <laughs> photos on it anyway, so good. I was like, 
you know, I like the look of the older cameras too. So I think yeah. it just works. So I went with the Panasonic DVX. Why the Panasonic DVX versus an HMC or a VX? Um, well, I've tried pretty much everything out. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I still go back to the DVX because I've tried. I originally started with that, and I tried pretty much everything since then. But I just really like, uh, I guess, the look of it. And uh, like I said earlier, like I guess with the VX one thousand and all, mm -hmm. I feel like it's for me. It's too much like a skateboard look, and that's not necessarily what I'm going for. I kind of want, like I said, I want to do my own thing with it. Mm -hmm. So it feels like it's more like if you see like my footage, it looks more like it could be mine, not just like another person with a VX one. So you feel like that camera makes you makes your footage unique to you because not a lot of people have that camera. Uh, yeah, I would say so. Uh, I, I would like to upgrade to, to HD, honestly, but we'll see how that goes. I'll probably just get another Panasonic camera. Yeah. Like one like you have. Yeah. The 4K ones are, are nice. Are ni the only, <laughs> the only <laughs> gripe that I have with it is there's like <laughs> what did no you say? The only gripe? Yeah. The only gripe I have with, <laughs> with. Never heard that word. No? No. It just means like. A problem? Yeah, like an irritation or like oh, I got a gripe. Like this is irking me. Yeah. Okay, continue. Sorry. But what fish eye am I supposed to put on that thing? <laughs> I, do what you guys fish have eye? One yet? Does no. It, oh. Does the extreme fit on it? Do you know? Well, there's. Let's talk about the extreme real quick. So, yeah. what, what? Even if I could hypothetically buy the mount that would then connect to, yeah. to the extreme, like they're basically extinct though. You can't buy them. They're. Yeah, you could probably find them, but they're expensive. They're like four grand. And I've, I honestly love watching footage with the that setup, yeah, but after filming with it, I I'm like never again. <laughs> it's not it's never not for me because it weighs twenty pounds. It weighs right? too much, and I feel like I'm forced to uh, to film like what everyone thinks is like properly and just kind of like the same as everyone else. Like I can't because I like kind of moving the camera a lot up mm, and down. Same. Like whenever somebody's on the ground, I get real low, and then they hop up on a ledge, I lift it up with them. But with the extreme, I'm kind of just like just doing the same thing the whole time. True. And the fact the lens costs so much too, I'm like, I don't want to get close at all with this. Yeah. Yeah. Your arm starts hurting. <laughs> Your arm I, starts I feel hurting. like I've seen a picture of a skateboarder before, and they had some sort of like extra arm support for the camera. Real right. shit. Like that was. That was how they were able to like hold their arm in this certain position yeah. for a, a period of time. When uh, I was in New York one time and we were just pushing, dude. Every time I've been to New York, and I'm with Eric, we always, for some reason, somehow run into like the Supreme guys or like the FA guys. Really? Yeah. Like either we just pass by them or like we're at the same spot. Literally every time. That's sick. But this past time, I saw Strobeck filming, and he had like a wrist guard, and I was like. <laughs> So that's what it this is. Old huh? ass fool with the, in my head, right? And yeah. then like I forgot what trip I was on. My wrist was going out. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> you old ass man. Yeah, for real. Oh, the turntables. So I, I bought one. I keep it in my camera bag just in case. I might need one too. <laughs> Dude, your wrist goes out. Because even if it's fisheye, you're like, your wrist is going. And then when you're doing long lens, your wrist is in this like mm -hmm. position, you know, and it's or this wrist or I don't know how you hold. I I keep it like this, like a bed. Usually, like and like I tuck my like, what is this? Your forearm, right? No, under bicep, tricep. 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 I tuck my <laughs> tricep into my chest for like steadiness. But like either way, your wrists are always in motion. Mm -hmm. So yeah, one trip it was like really going out. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> you just reminded me of that. That's funny. I feel like what's interesting, like when I, I wouldn't even consider myself like a scooter filmer. I've filmed a lot of things in scootering and I, I've been a part of a lot of pieces, but I've never, I don't feel like I've ever made that like a part of my identity in scootering. If anything, I'm a scooter photographer. And that's why I feel like I got lassoed into the scooter filming world is I just had the camera. I had a DSLR. Right. But one thing, and I didn't realize this until I had the Tilt HMC, because Tilt sent the HMC out to me to film my video part. And I didn't realize that DSLR footage looks so flat relative to like other footage. And I realized that 
the actual mechanism inside of the camera, like the glass inside of the camera, the actual lenses coming close and far apart, that action really creates the frame to look like it has so much depth. Like you, I feel like you can almost see like behind mountains. Like I know that sounds dumb, but like the mountains moving between each other, like it it creates this this depth to the video that I feel like you can't capture it with the DSLR unless you did extensive editing work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that makes sense, I guess. <laughs> but no, like the... I mean, I just started filming with DSLR because shit got too, like, <laughs> yeah, shaky and jittery. Like, they're not video cameras. They can they're take, not. You can they can take video. You can definitely make them work, though. I know. I've seen a lot, a lot of skate fish filmers. Shy. No, you I feel, can. I've sure. seen a lot of... Like newer, newer, newer DSLRs, like Panasonic's DSLRs, uh, like the what are they called? Lumix. Yeah. They, uh, nice. Spanish Mike. You know who that is? Spanish Mike TV. Mm -mm. He films for a P Rod, and okay. he like films the primitive videos and shit. I know the primitive videos are very good. Yeah, he he uh he actually DM me. Well, I DM'd him. Hey, yeah. what's your camera setup? <laughs> and he actually hit me back, and it was a Lumix. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> that's nuts that's sick i feel like i feel like the ultimate setup would you would have to have a separate smaller camera that would be that would be like your fisheye camera yeah. and then you would need to have a big actual yeah, video for camera long lens. for long lens that's what a lot of them do but the then the, that but then it comes to the problem like you have to lug all that shit around yeah, right. <laughs> like, and they have to be like the the video quality and look has to be like similar uh, similar yeah it has to match up yeah I know Bradley Morrison's got that unlocked though. He's got a little handy cam. I don't know which one. I I've asked him too, and then he films with the DSLR. But some of his footage sometimes is too shaky for me. I have the but, sorry. No, but I saying? love his work. You know, Bradley Morrison. Yeah, yeah. What's funny about Bradley Morrison is I had no idea who he was, and when I was and I was in Europe with him, and he was just kind of tagging along with like the district group, and. I I knew I knew who he was um, f from an Instagram, but, I, but Instagram people on Instagram don't post pictures themselves, so I didn't know it was actually him, right? right. So I'm I was I was filming for my white trash Willie video, and there was a particular trick I wanted to do, and I was like, "Yo, is anyone here like feeling confident with filming fisheye?" And he comes up, and he's like, "I'll do it, I'll do it perfect," <laughs> and I was like, "I was like, you were with the filmer, and you didn't know it." <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. And I was like, I kind of just like wiped my like my hands on my pants, like thinking this was just some random, right? Yeah. And and he films me, and he's like, "You want to check it out real quick?" And I didn't land it, was, it yet. Oh, okay. And I and I looked at it, and I was like. Damn, you filmed this really nice. <laughs> like you filmed this yeah, real I love, good. I love Bradley's work. I love he's he's one of my favorites. And then yeah, no, Bradley's so sick. He's also like a such a nice guy to be around too. Yeah. I enjoy my time with him. So you said something earlier in the podcast, Rich, that I wanted to expand on. Yeah. Um, so you said that you feel weird about using a VX because it looks too much like skateboarding. Um Yeah, I would say so a little bit. Yeah. It's just, just like a staple for skateboarding, yeah. you know? Like, they're the ones who, like, really stapled the VX 1000, 2100, like, for skating. Yeah, because here's here's been, like, my... I'm going to use the word again. Gripe. Use my gripe with, with like, scooter filming in a way. And and it's, like, it it kind of... Like, you have to you have to look at the fact of scootering. Scootering got popular, like, popularized to the scootering that we do in, like, 2009 at the earliest. That was when YouTube was around, right? That was mm -hmm. when HD existed. Mm -hmm. And, and but for skateboarding, skateboarding in the 70s, like there wasn't the internet like we have now. There right. was something, but the main mode of, of, of what would it be? Uh, media was magazines and it was, it was actual VHS tapes or yeah. DVDs. And the best camera at that time was the VX. Yeah. Like the VX was the the great camera because it had the handle on the top. You were able to put a fisheye onto it. Like it was the camera. And it was it was also like the top quality like filming. It wasn't and and like I feel like that is such a staple to skateboarding and that is such a part of skateboarding's roots that for scootering to come in when it was in a time where HD already existed and to go back and like recreate what skateboarding did, I feel like it's just kind of dis disgenuous in a in a way. Like I feel like 
specifically with the eight with the VX. Mm-hmm. And I feel like for scootering, it's like we're not we're not making scooter videos that are that are recreations of skate videos. Like in my mind, it's like we're creating scooter videos, right? Yeah. And I feel like we have to figure out like, all right, scootering is a result of the internet. That's just a fact. It's like how can how can we push that a little bit further? And that's another reason I get kind of upset when people are like yell at Instagram videos. I'm like, come on, like this is this is also part of the internet. You know, this is the new the new way of the internet in a way this is how people share content similar to how skateboarding shared content as magazines except we can just be our own authors now and i feel like true i feel like we as scooter riders like we need to just like all right like what are we at right now like 5k 6k like i know that those resolutions are very expensive but like we should we should be like looking at those as our goal because Soon we're going to have the internet and the monitors and everything where you can really take advantage of all that stuff. And I feel like we, instead of going back to to tapes in a way, I feel like that is just like counterproductive. Like that's just, tapes are going to go away at some point. Yeah. And I'm just curious, like I, I don't understand certain scooter riders' obsession with old videos. Like if they just like the, the medium and they like that format, sick. But I just, I feel like it's just, it's skateboarding. Yeah. I feel like it's just it's just because of like skateboard influence. Yeah. Cause like I, f- <laughs> okay, one, scootering made DSLRs pop. At one year, we were all making edits on DSLRs. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> like with DSLRs and dubstep, or like some Mac Miller music, <laughs> Mac Miller yeah. Kid Cudi music. Like that's our staple. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what made me transition was just riding with the Peachy guys, mm-hmm. and that and like. I was heavily influenced by skating prior to riding with them. I just didn't know anything about cameras. I didn't yeah. know like what camera skate videos were filmed on. I, and I never did the research. I was too busy riding. Mm-hmm. And uh, I never made the time when I was home. So like when I started riding with them, that's when, because they were filming with the VX and I was like, oh, that's a, that's the camera people be using. Yeah, like that's the for specific sure. camera for. Yeah. And um, I didn't start learning about cameras till I was riding with them. And I kind of just like stopped using my DSLR mm-hmm. and I just like left it at home. I didn't even use it for pictures or anything. I just left that shit at home because like <laughs> we don't need it. Yeah. You know? And then um, I got a job working at Lucky Scooters right after high school. And I made a video with my DSLR for like the, one of their Christmas promos or whatever. And they were really juiced on it and they wanted to like have me produce content. Mm-hmm. And they're like, we have a camera if you want to use it. And I'm like, fuck it, dude, give it to me. I don't care. And they gave me an HMC 150. And really? Yes. And lucky. At the lucky scooter. <laughs> Hell yeah. And at that time, dude, nobody was using that camera. Like right oh. now in scootering, everybody was yeah, using it. Yeah, that's the camera. Right now, everyone's using that camera. But at that time, nobody used it. And the first videos I made with that camera was Peachy Sticker Promo 1 and Peachy Sticker Promo 2. Classics. Classic videos. And after that, I just fell in love with the look. So, like, when I had to give the camera back, all I wanted was to get that camera. Mm. So, I bought HVX 200s, and I didn't like the usage. Like, I I didn't like the um, consumer use. Like, I don't know. Like, I just didn't like P2 cards. I didn't like... How that's heavy the, they was. That's the difference between really, the H- really bulky compared to the HMC. So bulky. That's compared the, that's to the, the main difference between right. yeah. And so um, I was just like, fuck this, dude. I want to get that HMC that I've uh, that I used right. And so I got the HMC and I've been using it ever since. But I didn't know that that was gonna be the camera of scootering. Like literally yeah. every single person has that camera now, and now I don't want to use it because everybody's using it. I feel like the HMC has this warmth. To the, to it the, does. It has but this I feel warmth. Like you could just, I mean, if you just go into your settings, you know what you're doing, you can make your video look however you want. No, absolutely. But the grain, the certain grain that HMC has, it's yeah. like, it's like a, it's not actually like a hue warmer, but it, there's something like the pattern of it or something. It, mm-hmm. it, it looks, it looks warm. And there's certain cameras that I feel like look more cold. Dude, it's just like the perfect combination of HD and VX. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? It's like the functionality, the function, the functionality of an HD camera, but you still get that crispy look. But when you import it, it's like the file sizes are so small. That's one thing I love about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, no, that shit's fire. <laughs> but I low-key want to upgrade to like a 4K setup. Yeah, I'm not gonna same. say what setup. 
but I want to upgrade to a 4K setup because times are changing and I'm with it. Oh, yeah. I think there's a place for both, though, for sure. Like, uh, a lot of people, like, don't like one or the other, but I, I think we both, we need both of them in scootering for sure. I think that we were, we were talking a second ago about, like, about enhancing the person's riding ability with with the the songs you know and it's like you use specific songs for specific people so that way their energy releases will get amplified mm -hmm. and and i feel like the actual the what's the the resolution of the video but beyond just the resolution the contrast the shaping the everything dude everything that, has has to do there's with it. certain writers that i I would feel very weird about watching in 4K in a way. Or vice versa. And vice versa as well. Yeah. Like I couldn't imagine watching, for example, Jack Ward, half bars, the kid who did the no double nothing front scoot in yeah. the, mm -hmm. like I could never imagine watching him on a VX or like on, on an HMC even. Like yeah. he, he has to be 4K. No, I feel you. The whole thing, I mean, it's a smaller version, but the whole thing is a production. Yeah. Like it's a production. And like you have to... You have to consider all the variables going into the end product. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because in the end, it has to have a look and it has to have a feel. And there are several variables that go into that, mm -hmm. just like a production in a movie. You mm -hmm. know, because they consider the music, they consider what camera, they consider the actors. So it's the same thing, just different field. Yeah. When you, when you're when you're creating a piece, either one of you guys can answer this. What when you're creating a piece, what what part, like, what is the first, this is a question I get from kids a lot too, like, what is the first step to creating, like, a great scooter video? Like, both of you guys have created great scooters in the videos in the past. Like, what what was, what sparked, the, like, the initial adventure for that, that video? Was it you heard a specific song and then you're like, I'm going to make a video based on this song? Or was it I have this... Like I have this opportunity to film these guys and then I'm going to hopefully like turn this in and I'm going to find a song. Like what, I don't know. Like what, what's your process of creating things? You can go first. Rich. I, don't, I don't have like an organized process with it all. This is just every time it's just a new, yeah. new, new attack strategy. Like usually just like, for example, like, um, like I filmed a video of Kubo a long time ago. Mm -hmm. We were just like going to go out and film normally for, I think I was planning to work on like a longer video for him. And I'm like, we kind of didn't know what we we're going to do. And I kind of like the idea of like quick day edits and stuff. Yeah. So we're like, we filmed a couple of clips pretty well, fast. Okay, hold up. Why do you like quick day edits? What specifically do you like um, about them? You just kind of see like, we filmed this during this time period, you know, like this was like. Because I've heard musicians talk about before that like when they're recording certain songs, they could only record that song on that specific day during that specific like vibe during that specific like time. There's, mm -hmm. there's a certain artist that can't go back and re-record that song exactly how they did it because that energy is just gone. It's yeah. like for you, you do you like day edits because all of the clips are kind of in a way, the coloring looks the same, everything like you can create, you can use the consistency of all the clips as a variable in your art. Like, do you like having that as a factor? Yeah, de definitely. Um... But I guess with the, in that situation, it was, uh, you know, we met up and all, and I, I just realized, I'm like, hey, we can kind of just make, like, a quick, like, day edit. And, mm -hmm. like, we just we kind of treated it like an Instagram video for that. And then he, like, shows me the song that he's into. I'm like, dude, this works perfectly for you, I think. And then, yeah, like, I can't see that happening again on another day, turning out that good again. But just worked really good that day. He was getting tricks, like, first try. And I'm like, okay, we just keep moving on. Mm -hmm. We filmed everything within like a few blocks of each other. Even we didn't go that far. So, but it's like hard to recreate that now. I would say, at least in Chicago, because I've filmed so much there. So now it's like, you go to a spot and you're like, well, I filmed these ten things beforehand, so I don't know what you're gonna do. Yeah. Well, good luck. Do you say it in the sense of you don't know what the writer is going to like one up? What 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 is he gonna I'm add? Say they one up. It's just or is of... it is it for you perspective? Like I've already filmed this clip at like ten different angles. I don't know how I'm gonna make this unique. Yeah, more so like I don't know how to make it unique because mm -hmm. I guess a lot of the the tricks that I'm filming, I don't really. I'm like I always tell him like you don't gotta like just throw the next trick that's gonna change scootering or something. Just literally 
have fun and like throw a couple quick stuff that look nice. Yeah. I, I found I like that a lot better than just watching like a bunch of insane clips, I guess. Just something that you can tell the person was having fun doing and Yeah. I feel like there's a certain when when they're riding in between tricks that looks different than when they're like all stressed out and like yeah. it's it's only just ha hammers, you know what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. I I found that same problem that you were talking about when I was working at Woodward shooting photos. Yeah. Where I would get to a point where I was like, I don't want to shoot photos here anymore because I've shot a photo on every single obstacle. Like I don't know what like I don't know what else to do. I I've shot this exact quarter pipe in the sunset, perfect lighting, everything. Like I can't one up that photo. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. That's how I've been feeling like the last couple of years, like back home, because I've filmed so much mm -hmm. and I'm working on like a big full length, but most of the footage is like when I go on a trip. So yeah then it's like everything's brand new i'm riding with someone i don't ride with as much so we can just keep stacking stuff really fast rather than like go out every saturday and like maybe get a clip here and there yeah what tell me about your full length um as much yeah. as you want to tell yeah i mean yeah i've been it's been hard trying to work on it over the years but i've been working on it probably like the last four years or so yeah and just i wanted it at first to get like something that was maybe like 20 minutes or so and like a mid length yeah but then it kind of turned on like hey i just want at least like one project that i've worked on for like a long time mm -hmm. however it turns out just so i can have something that i like so it's not so quick because usually like most of the videos i post it's like filmed in a couple days or like we went on a weekend trip somewhere or like a week at longest so you know i've been traveling all over the place saving footage for it and uh but you want to have like a masterpiece like your Even own, if it's not necessarily a masterpiece, just, but some, like, just something for that you. I can feel like, hey, like this is like a film that I made rather than yeah. like, because like I said, a lot of times, a lot of stuff I put out feels kind of like an Instagram vid to me or something. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Because like, you know, I, it seems like pe people watching might think like, hey, this is like this edit that we put out. It's like, we just kind of filmed this in like a day or two messing around. And this is how it turned out. but And it's sick. Imagine if you put... At least this will have a little more thought in it. But it, at the same time, it's been hard. Because, like, one minute I'm like, this is this is sick. Like, if I do this, and then it's like, I don't like it anymore. So I'm all over the place with it. But... That's just the creative process. Hopefully, like, yeah, we're going to film <laughs> for it a little more on this trip. And then one more trip I'm trying to start, maybe, like, beginning of next year. Mm -hmm. um, and try to be, like, the ender section. And then, okay. Yeah, and then we'll premiere it, like, in February, March, hopefully. At outset, that'd be sick. You should premiere to the show Street Jam. That'd be crazy. I was thinking about. I was telling him like, it, I haven't really. I've edited it down a little bit, but it might be like really long. So I was saying that I don't know if everyone Fuck wants it. to sit for two hours or something for that. So like, I'd rather have it. But on like, its own come thing. on, that's like home court. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I also kind of want to just get it like out of the way, cause knowing me, I'll just like keep it, keep working on it, and then it's like I'm not done by the Street Jam. I'm not. I don't think I'm finished. So well, that's can, like, four really more months from for, February. Yeah, but still. But I don't know. I think it's. I think I like the idea of having it its own thing. Whoever wants to show up for it will show up, and then post it online. I think you're underestimating yourself. Maybe I yourself. can film another video after Facts. that premiere at the Street Gym. Not only that, you have to consider that not everyone has like the funds to take two trips to Chicago for two different events. Well, they don't have. Uh, yeah, they can see it on when they can. Or like I guess. work time off, you know. Yeah. So it's like. You, like, it's conveniency, you know? I know you don't want people to sit around for two hours, but, like, I will sit around for two hours <laughs> to watch your will, video. Yeah, and I'm, I guarantee like Will said, around. you're definitely underestimating yourself. I mean, think about we'll one. possibility. One, you, I love your production. So, mm -hmm. like, it's not like it, we're not going to enjoy two hours of scootering that you produce. You're going to make sure every second of that is sick, right? Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. <I> <laughs> <laughs> up to his standards yes yeah Come on. and yeah. then two like the list of names you have in that video like yeah it, I have a lot I, it's pretty much a feature film it's pretty much scootering like, in a uh, video like i guess like a like a homie section but a feature film because it has a lot of people for sure so it's like i don't know you just get yeah, you do you should, have a name for it you should give yourself more uh, a couple value idea has been nothing yet like for sure no oh, yeah i <laughs> Never I'm just, know. I'm, I'm just thinking like, you could, you could turn this into like something big. Yeah. <laughs> or like Maybe. build more value around it in your, we'll, in we'll your see head. How it goes depending. On like, like you need, you need to have a T-shirt for the video <laughs> when it comes out. I like, mean, Badger threw a I whole event that. for a weekend for his video. 
But that's what I was saying. Like, I might kind of rather do something like that where it's like an event for the video rather than just people want to come off of the street jam and then we also have a video playing after. You know? Yeah. Because maybe by then I can film a second video that's shorter and premiere it there. Why are you worried about people thinking it's going to be too long? Well, are you think you think you think people it's are gonna be go, long, <laughs> but it's like it's entertaining, you know? Yeah, it's like I feel like out a lot of street jams, there's there's a couple premieres, right? That usually takes like a couple hours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, but like just imagine there's gonna be other videos too. It's gonna be or like you can just say no, just, just tell videos. everyone no. This is when, like, yo, this is the Chicago street jam, this is my home court, this is my video. Yeah, we'll see. I originally wanted to do it during the street jam, but I've been, like I said, thinking trust about your it. gut. So we'll see. Who knows? I'll come out. I'll come out for. <laughs> you could take my Chicago street jam virginity. <laughs> I'll come out for the video, dude. <laughs> I just we will way, we will come out. I just hope it's at a point where I feel like good about releasing it next year. Like whatever. Hey, can happens. I give you some constructive criticism? Yeah. You haven't even <laughs> gone. I guarantee you that even when you're done with it, you're still going to be questioning it. I, I mean, feel like th that's how I am for sure. Oh, I'm well, that's like, that's just like, yeah, every every like, artist is yeah. their worst critic. Like, yeah, 100%. It's like you kind of just get to this point in the project and it's like. And that's kind of how it turned into <laughs> a full length, I guess, because I was just like, I don't like this right now. Because originally it was like, like, for example, I went to Barcelona a few years ago and. You did? Yeah. I Fuck filmed, yeah. like, Turn a up. lot of those local kids there. Like, there's, like, 30 of them. And that's, like, a whole, like... Do you have Ivan Jimenez footage? Uh, I don't think so. It's just a lot of the... A lot of kids from there, though. And then... Yeah. I'm, like... I was going to post on its own. And then I'm, like... I don't know. <laughs> He's, like, I'm going to just put it in my full length. So then it eventually just, like, got thrown into the full length project. And I guess this gets added to it. Bro, he's been filming for this for, like, four years. Damn. It's a long But I've released some stuff since then. Like, a couple of videos that I've released I was going to throw in, but then I'm like, this one's good enough to be on its own because this is an actual, like, quick weekend edit. Like, the video I posted of Brian and Justin, I was just like, I'm just going to make sure I post something. So this looks like it'd be pretty good on its own. What? What? I'm curious. It. What is your objective for the video and maybe there doesn't have to be like a specific objective but if you do have one i'm curious like is this because you said you want to create your own your own part that that's like this is like something like you're tired of doing all these little pieces you want to do like something main right yeah like and what what do you want the edit to bring to scootering that scootering right now already doesn't have <laughs> a um... good video just kidding I guess like just having like a like a long project that's been worked on that's like I guess like chill and, and like fun with it because a lot of times we see like these new videos and everyone tries their hardest and like is throwing down mm -hmm. but I think we also just need something that's like you know just chill and easy to watch I guess what if part of the video was about was documenting you making the video like a documentary style not like a documentary style, but like you had part like little sections in between sections that was like you, you potentially maybe not second guessing yourself, but just like the creative process. I think that's your filmer part. Yeah, like it's a filmer part where I just talk about filming in the middle of the video and the cuts. Back well, in. it like the whole video is like the thing that ties everything in the video together is you. You know what I mean? I feel like you got to have like some sort of significant moment in the video besides from just maybe like a guest clip of yourself you know maybe i guess i don't wasn't really thinking about that too much i think um, that'd be cool i am gonna throw a lot of like just kind of nonsense b-roll in between like we'll have like maybe 10 minute of just scootering and then it cuts to just like almost like vlog style <laughs> on the vx of us messing around like i have some of him remember messing around at like, northern banks yeah and he drew a picture of eric <laughs> yeah that's a good part of the video that was years ago that's what i'm saying that was like a long time ago yeah. So let me ask you th this next question. I, I feel like this is potentially an area that scootering lacks. And the only place I can compare this to is skateboarding. Mm. But I think where scootering lacks is we don't have a defined one particular media source like what Thrasher is in skateboarding. Because I feel like that's one thing that bums me about scooter. Trendkill is kind of doing that right now. Though. Trendkill is doing it, but it's it's still like 
companies aren't sending their videos to trend kill in like companies aren't happily paying trend kill to post their videos knowing that trend kill is going to pull more views for them than them just posting it to their youtube channel right now the only brand i can see benefiting not sending it to trend kill but they still send it to trend kill is ao scooters because mm -hmm. ao's youtube still attracts numbers Brian's video? Everyone else's YouTube channel, you have nothing to lose. Literally send them to Trenko. Nobody else is Til pulling... Tilts. Tilts? Tilts does really well. Okay. Our, well, mo I mean, mo I most edits on Tilt get like 30 to 40. I can't videos. really think about any other YouTube channel that pulls views like AO. So. There's AO and then Envy for some reason pulls a lot of views. That's not for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Envy, number one, is has been consistent throughout all these years. Yeah. Like, they've never dropped the ball throughout all these years. Like, in all these years, everybody that used to post when we were younger dropped the ball. Envy never did. Two, they, ha they value, like, the production behind their edits. So if you watch them, like, if you you watch them right you watch the blunt and envy videos oh yeah it's great production behind it's usually po their videos po um poppy what's his name roots boy they did have him for a long time yeah but i'm pretty sure it's new guys i forgot his name but he films jonathan peroni a lot mm. it's like him bradley morrison um i forget but they've been so on top of their of their content for a long time and they haven't stopped so that's why they keep pulling yeah. because like they've just never ever dropped the ball but then a lot of people now are also posting to olay every once in a while we'll yeah post that's the thing olay mm -hmm. and trend kill are both trying to do the same thing and then i feel like olay attracts all the park riders and trend kill just attracts all the street riders yeah well i mean clayton and i were talking about this for a while of like do we want to turn undialed into like this initially like years ago and it was like well because that's what your instagram is exactly yeah and and it was just we felt like it would get too confusing with making like personal youtube videos and like with clayton and i doing making wax molds i don't know doing random things making yeah. fingerboard videos but then also on top of that like being the main source of scootering videos like i feel like that would that would potentially like I wouldn't say hurt scootering, but it wouldn't it wouldn't be like it, it wouldn't in my mind, even though I would be running it, it would be like not officially the scooter like pay like with all the other things mixed in, like there would yeah. have to be two pages and then that would just get confusing. I mean, here's the way here's my opinion on yeah. it. Is <clears throat> one, there's already people trying to do that. Trend kill and Olay, mm -hmm. right? And then two, your guys' audience already comes to you for specific content. Exactly. Not saying you can't s switch it up. Like, everyone tries to switch it up. Not in a bad way. Like, you know, people like to do new things, try new things, have new motives. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if your audience comes to you for specific content, and then out of nowhere you just switch to this it's YouTube bad. channel that only posts other people's videos, then it's like, people are like, oh, dude, like, this isn't what I come to Undialed for. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, not saying you can't do it. Yeah, but, but it, it would be like it a would be tough transition. It'd be a it'd be a length lengthy project. But I feel like it's useless because there's already people out there that are specifically trying to do that, like like Trend Kill, like Olay. Um, I just the the problem with it is if if only Olay or Trend Kill had the leverage to to actually pull more views than yeah. the actual YouTube channels. But on top of that, and this is another big thing. Yeah. I think that another reason scooter companies like to post their own videos is because they are still caught in the Tanner Fox effect. Oh, 100%. Which is, wait, you make money from YouTube? Yeah. All right, yeah, we need to get a YouTube channel going ASAP. Yeah. And it's like... <laughs> and you need to post like consistently for that to happen. like. And they don't invest in the consistency. But they don't understand yeah. how the algorithm works. So they think, all right, I'm going to post one video up. That video is going to do get a, a million views. And I'm going to get consistent paychecks from mm. here on out. And then when it flops, they blame it on the person that they had to do it. Exactly. <laughs> and it's like, bro, you're fighting against the algorithm right now. Like, yeah. So where would you want to post your video?
<laughs> uh, I mean, I'm fine okay. with just posting on my channel. But, uh, I do like how, like you said, like trend kill. I think there's a lot. There's a lot of videos I've seen on trend kill that I just would have like, like no idea where to even find them beforehand or anything. I yeah, never even noticed them. So that's fact. That is going in like a good direction. I sure. love how trend kill posts videos from different countries because I would have never seen these kids. Yeah. I would have never found these videos. If like they weren't uploaded from Chenko, because mm -hmm. they post a lot of a lot of to me foreign European edits. guys, yeah, yeah, and it's really sick. I'm like, yeah, because usually like those kind of videos, like um, I sometimes have people like people DMing me like, hey, I just worked on this video if you want to check it out, and I go check it out and it has like 30 views, but it's like a f actual legit thing, and then like normally beforehand like. Most people aren't going to see that video, but yeah, now they post it on Trendkill and everyone else can see it. Mm -hmm. Not just like me who we hit up about it. Yeah. I mean, like one thing to consider brand owners and content creators for brands is um, you're not going to make money unless you own all the rights to that video. So I'm like, if you're using music that isn't, you know, whatever, you're not going to make money. So might as well just send it to Trendkill. Yep. Or Olay. Or Olay. Sorry, Jared. <laughs> I feel like it it once again falls into that same thing of like the the Tanner Fox effect. Not necessarily that, but just the the same reason why certain songs work with certain people, certain certain bit qualities work better with certain people. It's like also it's like the next stage is like what YouTube channel are they featured right. on, you know? Like that's another stage of the equation cuz there's certain writers I could definitely see be posted on late, but I could not see them on Trend Kill and then vice versa. You said, you, oh, like you can't see them. On, like, imagine a Vincent Conderna like edit on Gen Kill. It would just seem off. Or maybe actually, specifically Vincent, I think he could do it. Yeah. But but someone who's not as established, like Dominic Trone, who rides for the scooter farm. Oh, um, we're trying to say yeah, like yeah. Vincent. Vincent kind of fits that like in a way like the Elliot Arnold like group. Yeah. I mean, well, they came up at the same time, but I don't. I don't think Vincent has that image. It's not the image. It's just that, that kind of. They rode together so much that I just see so much similarities between the two, of Vincent and like... Vincent and Elliot. They're completely different people, but they, they have that San Diego like kind of. Yeah, Vincent's the most San Diego person ever. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> he is San Diego embodied. <laughs> so funny um but yeah no scooter <laughs> scooter <laughs> what just reeling it back <laughs> i just i don't know i like talking about scooter filming no, no yeah 100 percent. um but i'm just curious where the next stages of scooter filming are gonna head um once once we have media content that people would rather watch on their vr headsets like are we still gonna <laughs> Like, are we Damn. gonna are we gonna take that? Never once thought about that. Like, are are people are people going to expect a scooter video like POV? Like, you're the one like riding the scooter. They like, already do. John Ray's riding through New stuff. York. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> people or, love watching that shit. Yeah, dude. Trish sent me his video and is like, I like watching these. No, she and did. I go. No, stop. she did it. No, said, she did it. I swear. It. <laughs> I said, stop watching that right now. <laughs> did you, I did you the, show her your account where I, you have the, the highlight? Yeah, I gave her the whole rundown. I was like, quit watching this shit. Yo, well, luckily, guys, if uh, you want to push scootering in the next step, there's a brand new Black Magic camera that came out. Super cheap, six grand. Not, not really, but. Super uh, cheap. It, 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 uh, <laughs> it records 12K uh, no, at 60 right. FPS, 120 and 8K, and 4K and 240. Hey, turn up. Like normally that should be like 50 grand or and up. Yeah, so. and it's. Does that come uh, with the lens I too? I think it's like 50. No way. No, 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 no way. Like, no the lens way. is going to be it's like 30 just grand. The body, actually. Yeah, but then you also have to consider how, like the battery life. And can you imagine taking that whole shit to a spot? Well, I don't know because Black Magic makes smaller bodies. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they make, I've like, used a Black Magic. Ks. I've used a Black Magic before, not for scootering, but just mm. like for like music video, music video shit. And the battery life is ass. Well, the video that me <laughs> like, and Aaron I can't Hill film plugging into an element. The video me and Aaron Hill filmed my air promo that was all filmed on a Black Magic six K. 
turn up. I heard the VX batteries suck. Like you need to have like eight of them in order to like film a clip. They're not too bad. But compared to like the Panasonics, like for example, I've been here for like three days. I haven't charged the battery. It's like half. We've been filming for most of the day, so they last like turn up. twenty hours or something. Yeah, the battery I life like on the Panasonics are so sick. Yeah, the yeah. HMC just lasts forever. Yeah. Hey, speaking about edits, uh, what do you think of Skippy's new edit? <laughs> it was sick. <laughs> I love that edit. The crib, really. Yeah. Didn't I love Skippy's? Didn't Ryan part. make that edit? Ryan Ruig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Can anyone guess who Ryan? I'm just kidding. People know that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's a he's an exceptional filmer for sure. Yeah, he's one of my favorites. I think he's also, yeah. Ryan also has good uh, a good resume under his belt. Like he For has sure. some coalition parts. He's got uh, I think some AO videos, like not just of him, but like ones that he's filmed and edited. Mm -hmm. And then I mean, all his videos do numbers, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah, I'm. I was surprised when I found out that Matt McKean edited Parrish's video. I was. Are you sure? I think so, um, because he. You talking about his timeless part? Yeah, because or times up. Because part? I filmed clips in it, but I didn't get tagged as filmer cred, so I hit him up. I was like, "Yo, what the heck?" And he's like, "Oh, sorry, Matt did that." No shit. Yeah, and wow. like I, I'm not, I'm not upset, but like. <laughs> yeah, no, that's sick. Yeah. That's just my my rap my my trail to. I didn't know Matt edited it. Edited it. I think. Clayton, can you confirm? Or maybe just put the description. Dude, in? Parrish is another filmer that I really uh, the timeless like. Part? His work, right. I love Parrish's work. Shout the out Parrish. Up. Parrish, I don't know how you film with yeah, your camera up. setup. He films with the extreme too, so he's been he filming with the He has HMC and extreme. He has the 170. Is it rare? No, no. It's just like a step above. It's literally like in. I think it's like in between an HVX 200 and an HMC 150 because. If I remember correctly, it still takes P2 cards, right? The 170? Uh, I, I think it does, yeah. Mm. It's literally like I, the I haven't used that camera, but I've used everything else. Yeah. I just... Parrish has some of the best colors on his camera. I remember when yeah. I was filming with him, he just... He would... Before we would, like, film clips, he would just, like, spend this, like, extra little moment to, like, really dial in yeah. the colors for, the like, every single time. He goes hard with that. Yep. <laughs> it, was, it was cool filming with him. All right, final question. Who's your favorite scooter filmer? Scooter filmer? Uh, I don't know if I have like one answer. I give a couple. Give a couple. Give a couple shout outs. Uh, I think I like uh, my guy, Ian Hernshaw. Ian uh, is so good. A, the, thing, the thing about Ian is that he's a legend. So like we know about Ian's work. Yeah. Like we do. You know what I mean? But like the new generation, don't I don't know. think they know him nor his work. So it's like heartbreaking because... He we know his work. he opened yeah. up the can for a lot of things and no one gives him credit for it. We do. <laughs> I mean, we do, but like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm wanting him to come with for my final trip to help me film the Ender section, hopefully. So, and then probably like everybody in Minnesota, you know, be killing it, like Eric and Dakota. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're so good. Dakota Knight is good. Mm -hmm. What about you, Daniel? I am a huge fan of. Richard, Parrish, Daniel Ray. Um, those are my top three. Hell yeah. I would those add them as well three. to me too. It's hard to decide. It is hard to decide because, yeah. I mean. You like him. Because we're all friends. I mean, like, yeah, we're all friends. We're all friends with, with all the filmers in Scooter. Yeah. It's such a small group of filmers. Like it's not like you have so many people to choose from. So something that is so important for me with filming is like, it's the energy of the filmer when you're filming the tricks mm -hmm. is like, I feel like you can be sometimes trying some tricks and the filmers just like, it's like, there's no one there. It's like, you'll say something. It's just no reaction. I'm like, am I alone right now? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. and like, I don't know, just, just the, just the energy behind it. That's what I enjoy. I also include, uh, but it's when I say the, my favorite filmers too, it's also implied that their editing mm -hmm. is also like, yeah, yeah. yeah considered so like i love richard's editing love Parrish's, and i love daniel race thank you it's yeah your guys is smacks because not every filmer is like the best editor i've always tried to keep it like simple i don't like going too yeah. over the top with it i do 
You like going? Yeah, you do. Yeah, Did you, you have you seen his yeah. video part? Mm-hmm. Like his latest one? On? I know. You, <laughs> the metal one. Yeah. If only people could have seen the real one. <laughs> yeah, he has some great B roll of like some ass cheeks, in there, <laughs> but Colin didn't let it slide. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for the trend kill part. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, everything tell, happens like, for a reason yeah like your whole like personality and stuff really fits with that you know you're i feel like other people look you whack a lot of your but I feel artwork like I and stuff off. and everything so i just like being like low-key and simple with stuff so do you know my next challenge is for my next video what is it i was going to do this video <laughs> where every single clip was filmed with a mirror every clip i would just bring a mirror to a spot and I would just like get creative with it. The the mirror would just be a factor in it, right? So maybe it's like in the background of it or something. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to necessarily mm-hmm. like, yeah. just something. And I would I would have it be my reflect part, and I thought that would be pretty sick. Send but it. I don't know if I'm as juiced on that. There's another edit that I always thought would be cool, and I don't know if I'm the person to do it, but I want somebody out there to do it. Um, called thinking inside the box. That would be the name of the edit, and every single clip would be indoors, but they would be spots. So like. You get, a, you get a line at the mall. You get a line, like, through Carl's Jr., like Rob Dyrdek. You just... Every, Ikea. Every <laughs> single clip is, is inside of a building, like an actual building, and you're just writing spots in there. It's just what spots do you find inside? It'd be mm. so funny. Mm. It's kind of just like a, a, a meme edit, but... Until I think, someone actually does it. Because, I mean, you're putting it out there now. Like I some, want somebody I mean, to. Now, think about some that. person can now, like, go out and do that. The Minnesota guys filmed, the, I remember, a lot of clips like inside the Mall of America and stuff a long time ago. <laughs> really? So yeah. Did Paul Blart kick him out? I don't, I don't know if they even got kicked out. There's like a good amount of footage there where they're just like in the middle of the Mall of America. <laughs> Wait, I want to talk about that because you're talking about like next edits, what you want to do. Richard, what are some things you want to do? Yeah. Like some things that you're trying to like implement or work on. I just want to finish the, <laughs> the, the video mainly. I'm probably going to go back True. to filming like quick stuff because I still prefer to do that. So, like, just wait for someone to show up or maybe take a trip out somewhere to film someone or a couple people. Yeah. Because, like, if I don't do it quick, it's not going to come out. It's just going to stay. Yeah. You know, because I got, like, a lot of stuff that's just been sitting, like, done that I haven't posted. Yeah. Like, a lot of just, like, trip videos, like, vlogs, I guess. And Yeah. I yeah. got to push myself <laughs> to release it because I'll get to a point where I'm like, I don't like this anymore. Yeah. So there you go. I feel that. What about you, Daniel? What's your um, next goals within filming? <laughs> I low-key have a lot. Because literally prior to this year, I was not recognized as a filmer. Mm-hmm. No, you took off. You're filming everything. This year, yeah. You filmed so much. Because uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I was really... F- I don't even know what how it happened. I blame you. Like, you plugged me in a couple times. And, I did. like, that gave me some credibility. And, like, Got I appreciate you. you for that. Got you. Mm-hmm. And so prior to this year, I just like did whatever, you know, like I was like, yeah, I'll film it. Yeah, I'll edit it. Yeah, I got some good songs. And that I feel like the songs that I used is what like carried it, the mm-hmm. edits. But like after this year and now I'm like known as a filmer and not even a writer, like some people don't even know that I can ride. And it's like weird. At least you can ride, though. Yeah, at least I can ride. Can, I can't. Scoot but like some people really don't know that I can <laughs> ride. <laughs> but um. Uh, so like this past year that I've been filming and editing, um, I've really like realized that there are things that I need to work on. Mm-hmm. And, um, one is I really need to pay attention to my settings more because I used to just be like, yeah, it looks good. Let's run it. Right. Now I really want to focus on my settings, like how Parrish does. Yeah. And then I really want to focus on editing because I still haven't found my style in my opinion. I don't think I have found my style. Um, I've been experimenting, especially with like B-roll. I've been doing a lot of animation. And um, like an, if you watch Isaac's video, that's probably the most like effort and time I've put into some B-roll for mm-hmm. someone's edit. I'm really hyped on that. Because it was very detailed. Very, very In detailed. the past when you would do things um, like extra little animation, they were very simple. But that very. One, that, those ones. With were, Isaac's, were... I put like meaning into it. Um, I shared my edit around. To like, I shared Isaac's video around to people with um, like whose opinions I really like cared about. I sent it to you for feedback. I sent it to Paris for feedback. Sent it to Daniel Ray for feedback. Anton too. And like, um, I forgot who said it, but one of them said that some of the B roll was like that, like uh, 
didn't have uh what was it like it just didn't match you know what i mean because like i put b-roll of like isaac's tattoos and it was like well this is like a, a video for his parts you know what i mean and i put b-roll like animations of his of the parts but i mean they were kind of right that like it didn't really fit the setting mm-hmm. i just tried to make it make it more intimate for isaac yeah you know what i mean because that's art that he cherishes and so i wanted to make it like sentimental for him but like to, to the audience, it did kind of seem just like out of. Yeah. You no, know I, what I mean? I, I think it worked, but I, I get what you're saying. I think if you're going to do those. Yeah. And so I don't know. I, there's definitely a lot of things I want to work on. But the number one is I really want to like get my editing and style down. I really want to find my style and I really want to like capitalize on editing because I know Richards is very simple and, sh- and stuff and I want to keep mine simple like. The more creative stuff is like totally Daniel Ray and Parrish's lane, and like they can have. Well, it. you're good at doing creative stuff too. Like that's part of why my stuff is simple because I don't know how to do any of that stuff. <laughs> like, I'm definitely I, I gonna can't draw anything. You're really good at drawing and like can do all that. So I mean, like, I'm gonna experiment with it for sure to see what really fits me and what I like. But like the more creative stuff, Parrish can have it because that's him for sure. I'll take the most creative. Yeah, you <laughs> you'll take the acid trips. <laughs> yeah. But um, I so I guess to answer your question, overall, like just everything, because like now that I'm known as a filmer, and now that like people actually hit me up to, like without you having to plug me in, I am like people come directly to me, mm-hmm. and it's like I really want to be able to produce and give them what they want, mm-hmm. or even more than what they want. So, I've- yeah, 2021, bro, it's my year. I'm just kidding. I feel like <laughs> take off. I, I've been thinking. I've been thinking while you've been talking, and I think the thing that I want to zone in the most on my next edit is I really want to master the art of not knowing what clip you're watching. Like I want to have it what? basically be, basically be. You don't know if you're watching a clip right now or if you're watching a transition between two clips. That's cool. And and I I so I want it to fit like uh, so well that. The audience doesn't even notice where it. Like you just want it to be fluid. I want it to be so fluid. Like it doesn't feel like a cut. It feels like it's so like one thing. Okay, this this is from like when I'm when I'm drawing like when I'm painting things or drawing things on my iPad. The most interesting part of drawing to me is blending one color to another color because there's millions of ways you can do it. Yeah. That's right? a whole Instagram you, feed like you, that. Exactly. Yeah. You you can do different shadings. You can literally like glossy it like. Uh, what is it? Um, G- Gaussian blend or whatever it's called. You can do that between it. You can have like sections. Blur. Yeah. You can have vertical lines, horizontal lines, and every single thing looks a little bit different, right? Mm. And and for me, it's like when I see this color and this color and that blend in between, I also see like this clip and this clip. And how am I going to li- literally take the colors of this clip? And translate over to that next clip. So as if you're looking to the same as as like green to blue and then those perfect shades in the middle. I want to master the art of figuring out those transitions within my scootering video. That that sounds cool to me. It sounds very cool. Like and I feel like I'm, you're you're gonna be the one to do it because I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, that's all you. <laughs> that's, back. that's all you. Like, what, I, you like I don't want any hard cuts in my edit. Like no like blop. Blap. I kind of like doing that too, though, because a lot of times uh, I do transitions and stuff, but I try to make it as like so no one really notices rather than it being kind of obvious. So I think it kind of like distracts sometimes. Like I've definitely done stuff that you can tell, but a lot of times my favorite transitions are like where like literally like one clip will end and I'll f- end the clip at a certain spot and then like another spot looks similar enough that I just start it right there. And then like it just looks like you just panned away and continue the line. Mm-hmm. So. Absolutely. Yeah, that's sick. <laughs> no, I I took influence from that too, but I stopped doing that because I felt like it wasn't genuinely me. The transition in between? Yeah. Like from one clip to yeah, the other, like fading it. from one brick to another brick. Like I felt like, you know what I mean? I like doing it like a little bit. Like I've definitely done it a lot in some videos and some like not as much, but I kind of like find a balance of doing it a little bit. Because sometimes to me, it can be jarring if you're like, Starting off looking at the sky and just bringing it down and then end bringing it up or whatever. Mm -hmm. One thing that, since we're talking about transitions, I've actually been thinking a lot about transitions Mm -hmm. because um, 
I want I don't want it. I don't want cuts like hard cuts anymore. And um low yeah, key <laughs> I've get, I, I've but like not as fluid as yeah. you. Um I've honestly been taking a lot of inspiration from Trish cuz mm-hmm. like when she like edits her photos, she is like heavy on textures. Like she's so heavy on texture. And just like being around her when she edits and it's the mood of the color. It's like rubbed off on me and I'm like kind of want to fuck with textures now like in video like i want to implement it right and um i'm low like low key bro like lowest key i've been like trying to fuck around on making my own transitions like animating transitions and shit instead of uh just using a default premiere pro you could just like (laughs) like that or a heart yeah because i don't want a default transition and like i rather take the hard cut than a default transition yeah so like now I'm gonna try to like make my own transitions using like textures and different like looks and stuff. So like that's what I've been working on. That's sick. Secretly, I haven't implemented it on any videos anyone has seen. Mm-hmm. It's just like what I'm trying to do because I also don't want to like OD it. You know, I don't want it to look corny. I don't want it to look like choppy. I don't want it to look like like you don't want it to look like you just added filters to your video. Exactly. Because I used to do that a yeah. lot. <laughs> Cause I dude, who doesn't love some lens burns, you know? <laughs> well it was like it was like, okay, I got all the clips in here. I think they're the good length. We got the song. Didn't match it up. And then what's what else is it missing? It's throwing some lens burn. Lens burn. <laughs> <laughs> Go on YouTube, <sighs> download the YouTube video, put it on top. Make Half that, the saturation. <laughs> make it screen. <laughs> From normal to screen. Yep. Wait, hard burn looks way better. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever used that before. It's I have, bad. dude. <laughs> oh, I have. For sure. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll own up to it. I've done it. Dude, we'll go watch those early district edits. <laughs> nice. Film burn galore. I had a special folder in my computer. Burns. Oh, just different film burns? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah there's definitely a lot of stuff i want to work on and experiment with especially that like now i'm being taken serious as a filmer you know mm-hmm. like i really want to like own up that title mm-hmm. so filmer slash editor can't you know that's a whole nother job of its own how do you feel about nighttime clips i fucking love it i love nighttime clips do it, you they, they have a vibe they have a look it had like something about it well but i also have like some like attachment to it because like all of my nighttime footage that i ever got like at first was with peachy Mm -hmm. and it was because they were all so hot they were yeah well being in arizona you have to ride like during the summer you ride at night you can't ride during the day and um no but even during the school year because i started riding with them when i was a senior in high school and uh, they were all grown and everything like i was like the youngest fool riding with them and um, I can only ride with them after school. And they were, I don't know, like already out of work. And so they're like, let's go ride. And like, I used to get in trouble because I was out till like 2, 3 a.m. on school nights. Just like trying to get footage. And so like there's a special place in my heart when it comes to like night riding. Yeah. Do you just, the, yeah, no, I, I get that. Yeah. What about you? I guess I never really thought about it that much. It's kind of just, you know, if. If you're if it's nighttime and somebody wants a clip, you're gonna have to get it done a lot of times. So to make it work, yeah. But, but I, I don't. We don't really have the same problems that you do in Arizona, where it's like too hot to ride. It's like kind of the opposite during the winter, where it's just too cold. Yeah. And I'm the first one that's like, yeah, I'm good on riding <laughs> right now. It's 40 degrees. Wait till yeah. it's a little warmer. I just <laughs> dude, I, nighttime clip annoys me. And <laughs> See, I was about to say, because so some don't, people don't like nighttime clips. Well, it's just like, I feel like it's harder to do the trick, and it doesn't look as good. Like, that's how I see it. And and the only way that you can make it look good is you got to have a light on the camera that does justice. Yeah. You got to have ISO on your camera that will do some justice. Yeah. And and I feel like it's got to be fisheye. Every oh, time. Yeah, I don't like long lens. A lot, unless you have like a massive no. generator or some. <laughs> yeah. Up everything. But right. um, definitely nighttime is the, is the time for lines. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, that's basically it. But sometimes it's just fun being out really late at night trying to film like some nonsense clips. At I mean, like this fool loves nighttime riding so much. He made a whole series. Yeah. I've, 
without who, set. Remember, like the what, what's it called? The um... oh, you mean like when we did like kind of the scramble style? That's stuff? what it is. Scrambles. That's just been a thing like that. A lot of people in Chicago have done for like forever because mm -hmm. like a lot of times people meet up at like late at night and then they're just like, yo, let's just film a whole video tonight. And that's like the kind of videos I like doing because, you know, just a quick video, yeah. especially like when it's like we're filming everything, just do a bunch of nonsense stuff and just don't think about the trick. Just do what you want. Yeah. Actually, we, we filmed on those recently. I don't know if it's coming out or not, but Justin filmed that, but we met up at like 10 o'clock and then filmed for like five hours with like 15 people. Damn. So <laughs> Damn. that might be coming that out. sounds I think. like a, a lot. But it's, yeah, it's, it's just like literally just we're mobbing together and one person just does something random or like knocks something over, you know, just being destructive. <laughs> True. And then, of course, when you're filming like that, there's always something that happens, like some random guy will come up and then there'll be like a really weird situation you get on film, so... Or like you'll see a car crash or something. Yeah. It's not cold in Chicago at night. Well, we filmed that a couple months ago, so it was not too bad. Got it. But right now, yeah, I don't even I wouldn't even want a scooter right now back home. All the a lot of the shy guys still get it done. I don't know how they do it, but I'll be riding when it's thirty degrees or less. That sounds awful. They're tough. <laughs> yeah. I, um I was talking to um my friend named Kobe from Oregon. And he was telling me, he told me something that was like really interesting and, 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 it, and it reminded me of something you just said. He's like, Will, you don't like my love languages? Like not, not, not to like girls, but to like my boys, like what, what I, what I find that I like to do with my boys. And if, and if they can do this with me and I have a good time, like they're one of my really good friends is going out in the middle of the night and just riding curbs. <laughs> and just like that experience and i i was thinking about that and i was like i look you feel that you know for like, sure, like sure. You, you can just go out with somebody with no real objective except to just like chill ride what is object objectively in front of you i think that that that's that's fun like that's i don't know it's cool definitely <laughs> But curbs are sick. I've done that too many times. <laughs> but I feel like the conversations that you get into at and while you're in those times are I feel like so much like are on a different level than conversations that you would have during the daytime with the sun on you. And like I feel like since you don't really have an objective at night as much, it's a little bit looser and it's more more fun based than like stress based that it potentially might be during the day more. Mm -hmm. I don't know. For sure. Oh. I don't really know what to say about that. I'm stuck on the whole love language thing, but for your bros, I've never heard that. Really? Yeah. Like the like I've never I coined nev that right now. I've never been like, what's my love language with the bros? <laughs> like what's what what what's <laughs> the know? what's the thing you do with your boys that's like that's like ever ever everyone is bricked up every <laughs> that everyone is like mutual <laughs> that every that'd, that'd be skating for you, bro. Roller skating. Yeah. Nah, I mean like. Roller skating is sick, but like that's not like the thing that like, gets me bricked up with my boys. <laughs> <laughs> What's the thing that gets you yeah. bricked up with your boys? What's I your? Love? I don't know. Hold on, we'll get back to that. I need. I'm gonna think about it because I've never ever spent the masculine the time. urge to say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I love my boys, but I don't love them. <laughs> I mean, like, what do you think yours is? What mine is? Yeah. Creatively brainstorming. With the boys. Shit gets with specific up. people. <laughs> with specific boys. Because not every boy can do that. No, they can't. <laughs> no, they can't. There's a lot of boys. And a lot of the boys think they can, but they can't. Why are you you're looking right at him? I, Will and I, we have the conversations like that. <laughs> Will gets bricked around me. Dude, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I think, I think mine, now that I've, I'm, I just spent like five seconds thinking about it. <laughs> Fuck, no, I don't even know. <laughs> Say it. Say it with your chest, bro. No, like, it might be just 
being able to do anything productive with somebody. I think, I don't know, because I hate sitting around. Mm. Like, I hate sitting around. I understand, like... You're always getting something done at all times. Like, I have to do something, you know? And if if somebody is down to, like, go through that with me, shit, let's go. I'm bricked. I think the last person who, not as of recent, but, like, Ricky, I love spending time with Ricky. Cause he's just like always down to do whatever I'm like, and then, and it's like mutual. I'm always down to do whatever he wants to do. And he's always down to do whatever I want to do. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's always something productive. It's always something like either we go roller skating. He was always down to come ride with me. He was always down to like film a skit, do a podcast, fucking you name it. Like he was down to do. Ricky's a cool dude. Any of the productive shit. That we were down to do. You know what I mean? Like, Brandon can't do that. <laughs> I love Brandon to death. Like, that's my brother. But, like, he gets burnt out. And he wants to sit. And, like, I'm... I can't sit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the only time I do sit, it's to watch edits. Like, that's the only time I... One time he spent... Okay, we took, like, a two-week trip to California. And then we came home. And he stayed a two weeks with me because where he was living... They said he couldn't come home unless he quarantined. So he quarantined at my crib. <laughs> and uh, he got tired of chilling with me because he told my mom all I do is watch edits. And he couldn't watch any more edits. <laughs> and like, that's fine. Like, yeah, yeah, you like, got to be into it. I'm not going to get mad at you for that. Yeah, it's like that's but, your craft, you know. And when I'm not watching edits, I'm like, let's go do something. Yeah. So, so someone who's not a bum. No bum. No bums. We can't bum. Bums don't get you bricked. No. <laughs> What's yours, Richard? Yeah, what gets you bricked? <laughs> yeah, that's a hard one. Thanks that is a hard time. one. Um, I've never thought about that, but like, I definitely get juice when a when like my boys are down to do activities and product productivities. That's is that activities that are productive productivities yeah, productivities. I love productivities. I guess like similar to Daniel's like you know just whenever you we plan something out we're like we're hyped on it like yo we're gonna do this tomorrow let's go so that means you guys are bricked up together sometimes I mean yeah this this whole trip we've been been bricked up up, bro we've been planning (laughs) blood has been up (laughs) he calls me he's like yo like a month ago he's like would you want to come to Arizona next month I'm like yeah (laughs) yeah I'm like how long do you want me to stay for you and then we're just talking I'm like what if I just get a one-way ticket and we just, like, decide <laughs> while we're there? Yeah. So I don't even yeah. know when I'm going back home. But we're going to go all over the place. Yeah. Try to get as much done. <laughs> yeah. Much filming, as much uh, yeah. roller skating, as much movies and yeah. theaters, whatever we're going to do. We already have movies for Spider-Man. Yeah. Well, we already we have, have tickets, tickets for Spider-Man. For Friday, Thursday. It's like next yeah. week. Friday. Friday. No way home. Well... I think this is where I'm going to wrap it up, boys. <laughs> Pussy. I'm just kidding. But, hey, thank you guys so much for coming on. Daniel, you are you come on from time to time. But, Rich, <laughs> thank you're you. You're not welcome again. Right? You're not welcome again. Daniel could come, but no, you. Don't come through. Though, thank you so much. Don't come through. <laughs> I told you I needed this guy with me because he was the best. <laughs> you're the best, Daniel. You hear that? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not good with compliments. I can't take compliments. Same. Hey, well. Like, not even over text. I'll just reply with cool guy out, face. Peace out, guys. <laughs> Peace out. Forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> Respect. All right, well, can I go home now? Yes. Can go. I t- can I take it. these uh, cuffs Like, off subscribe, my comment, Get share with everybody. Set. Can you unlock Do a review. So I can leave. Um, make sure you tag us on all your posts. Oh, smash that like button. Go, 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 go. Bam. Leave a comment. Just gotta hack it, you know? Let's leave that comment. Swipe up. Swipe up. <laughs> Swipe up and leave that comment. Rate, comment, subscribe. <laughs> rate, rate, comment, subscribe. Leave that comment and make sure you share. Boom, 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 boom.